All right, we're joined at this time by the head football coach and athletic director from Tuscaloosa Academy, Robert Johnson. Welcome to the show, Coach. Hey, glad to be on. Absolutely, and of course, big uh, big season ahead of you. You're one of the huge favorites to win a state championship this year, and I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of pressure goes on with that. But but you've been doing this for some period of time now. Oh yes, sir. I've been coaching for you know over 20 years now, and. Um, you know, the, the pressure to me, I'd rather be in the position where we've got a little pressure on ourselves. So that means that we have some, some talent to, to really work with and some good coaching and people have high expectations. And to me, that's always better than low expectations. And, um, we, we know that we, you know, we've got a jam up schedule this year. It's going to be really difficult. You know, we started the um, season off on August 11th against Kapaya, you know, after um, 10 days of practice. And right. that's, that's pretty tough. And Kapaya's got a heck of a team. And, we don't feel like we played very well. We had some penalties and turnovers, but I'm sure they probably feel the exact same way. We were we were super fortunate to win that game. It was a dog fight. You know, came down really right to a um, you know they missed a field goal right at the end, and we were super fortunate to win that game. And I think if um, we played them later on in the year, they play a whole lot better, and we play a whole lot better. It just I mean August 11th. I've never even thought about playing a game <laughs> that early till this season is presented to us, and we're really excited about that. And, and there's no doubt that that makes it real difficult. I, I of course I didn't realize that y'all had so few practices before the game but uh, absolutely and, and, and of course that that helps lead there's an automatic rust that's going to happen in that week one of course that doesn't help matters any but now looking back I know it's not ideal to have to draw one that quickly but now looking back your team being able to dig down and, and win a game do you think that's something that they can take forward as the season goes that when they get oh into yeah oh look you know when you play quality teams I mean you know you, you know even if somebody's better than the other team, but they're a quality team. You know, every game has a life of its own, and then yeah. you're just fortunate to win. Um, you know, it, it might turn out at the end of the year that Kapai's got a got a better team than us, and we just were fortunate to win that game. But um, it, it, you know, to me, it's kind of like playing in the SEC West. I mean, every game's going to be yeah. a big battle, and um, all that does is make you better. And and you know, and then after that game's over, you got to forget about that game and move on and um, get ready to pre- prepare for the next opponent. Absolutely. We're talking about this with some of the selection committee members this week as we were voting. And we talked about the fact that the AISA uh, for the school sizes. Now, they're obviously, you know, that's right. When you go to certain places, there there are, you know, bigger schools and things in in different divisions. But as far as the the range of schools that you have in the sky, size of schools that you have, I'm not sure there's a better conference in in the country than the AISA. Mm I'm going to tell you what, I'm so impressed with the AISA. I, I have been in the public school league for so many years, even though I was, a, I was the head coach of St. James for 10 years, mm-hmm. which is a private school, but in the yes. public school, they're a 4A school. Actually, I think there's 3A now in Montgomery. Um, but, you know, when I came over here, and then I had been at, um, at some even some other schools too, other public schools. And um, when I came here, I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, I, you know, I know in Alabama you can have good football. Yeah. But the quality of opposition and the talent level just it blew my mind. Um, we actually coached an all-star game, an AISA all-star game a few years ago. And, I mean, there was upwards of like 15 Division One football players in there. I mean, just amazing. And, I mean, we had three of them. And, I, you know, it just – you know, we, we got kids going on and playing at, um, you know, some big-time football and do, doing really well. People might not even know O.J. Howard, you know, oh, played yeah. in the AISA. And, and what, 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 what blows my mind is that O.J. Howard played – in 1A AISA football right. and never won a state championship. Right. Now, right. that just right there will tell you the quality of the opponents and the coaching that goes on. Um, you know, and now, well, we're like every other league. You know, we have some schools that have down years mm-hmm. and um, aren't, aren't actually very good and struggling to hold on. But then in two years, that team, that same school might be the team that everybody's fearful of. Right. Um, and so it's just kind of crazy how it works a little bit. But I've been been really, really – um, had my eyes open with a level of competition in the AISA. Absolutely. And I've been familiar with AISA, obviously, for many, many years, and it just seems to be getting better and better so every I, year. I was going to say that also. It seems to be getting getting better. It really does. I agree. Absolutely. Now, let me ask you this. Speaking of good teams, you've got a pretty a pretty good one uh, coming to town this weekend when you square off against the no Stanford doubt. Academy. Number one ranked team in Division Four. You're the number 11th ranked team in Division Three. Two powerhouses. I think everybody before the season started kind of circled out three teams, uh, right or wrong, and those change as the season goes on, as we talked about. But I think sure. I think starting out the season, everybody talked about Ataga, Escambia, and Tuscaloosa Academy. How big is this game this weekend? I know it's just one game, but but how big is it for you guys? Uh, well, I tell you what, Escambia's got a great team. Um, you know, 
as far as playoffs go, this really, you know, they're Division Two in the ASA. We're Division Three, which doesn't make, make any difference by the quality of the right, It just right. means that's what the, you know, that just means what division we're in. But um, so it has no bearings on playoffs or anything like that. And when this game's over, we're going to move on, win or lose. Same way from them. But as far as right now, game week, and this is our upcoming opponent. Man, I couldn't be any more excited. Um, I've seen them on film. They are they are out of sight. They are very big. They've got some great running backs. A quarterback is is really quick and looks like he throws the ball well. Good receivers. Defense seems very very aggressive. Right. Um, it's just going to be a fun ball game. We know the well coach, Coach Hugh Fountain, um, is a great great coach, and he has some state championships under his belt and has been successful wherever he's been. And um, you know, I, I you know I hope that it's a competitive ball game because if it's a competitive ball game, I'm going to be proud of our kids. You know, if we stay in this game, and um, I think we can win it, obviously. But um, it's going to take some good things happening for us to, to be in that position. Absolutely. We're talking about Escambia Academy, Tuscaloosa Academy this weekend. Two AISA heavyweights going at it. I don't know, Coach. There's, there's so many matchups that you look at when you go into the game. Me as a spectator, I can't talk as a coach of this game because I'm not coaching in it, but as a spectator, the thing I'm looking most forward to is seeing your offensive line and their defensive line go at it. Absolutely. It, it may not have all the glitz and the glamour of the skill positions, but that is going to be a heavyweight dogfight down in the trenches this Friday. No, that's two big, big lines. Um, that they're, you know, I really think the games are won and lost on the offensive and defensive lines. I think the most important group um, on your football team is your defensive line. If, if, you're, if your defensive line is not good, you can't, you can't stop the run. You can't put pressure on the passer. You're, just, you're not going to be a very good football team. And I believe that we have a good defensive line. I know they have a good defensive line. And then offensive lines both both look pretty good. I, I think the trench is where everything's gonna gonna where it's all gonna be you know won or lost. I mean they've got great backs that I think they get an open field they can really do something with it. So it's got to be our our goal to Absolutely. not let them get in the open field. Absolutely. And and one thing I, I really like about your team going into this game is you've got senior players, but you got them at some of the most important positions. You got them at quarterback. You got them at running back. You got them at linebacker. Uh, left tackle. Yes, I mean that senior that senior leadership and and just talking to you guys, I've been really impressed. That senior leadership, your team is going to be crucial, not just this game, but this season, isn't it? That's right, that's right. Because I mean, you look, things go haywire. I mean, you know, um, and, and seasons can get off, a game can get off the rails in a hurry, and a season can get off the rails in a hurry. But when you got seniors who have been in the battle, battle tested, um, they know exactly what the coaches expect, and they've been around. And when things kind of go haywire or go sideways, they know how to pull it back and get us back on track. And the younger guys really respond to these seniors, and they're pretty businesslike. Um, you know, they like to have a little bit of fun, but at the same time, they know what kind of work it takes and what kind of mental preparation that it takes in order to um, win at a high level. Absolutely. Once again, we're talking to the head coach of Tuscaloosa Academy, Robert Johnson. Coach Johnson, um, as as you go forward in this game, what is the one thing that – I know there's so many, but if you had to go from week one to week two, what do your team need to improve on the most to win this football game? Well, without a doubt, turnovers. Um, you know, we had a few in the in the first game against Capaya. We did a better job. We actually played Lakeside in the scrimmage, and they've got a fine football team and fine um, head coach in Dan Clagus. But we played them um, the next week um, in a scrimmage, and so um, I think we improved on that. But I think you know you've got to be able to hold on to football and um, and keep it because if if we have a if we lose the turnover battle we're going to have a real difficult time hanging with the Scambia. Absolutely, and and like we said uh, earlier in the interview, that that time that that quick turnaround uh, from the time practice starts to the time that uh, the first game of the year. I mean, I, I've got to imagine that Monday uh, there probably were some frustrations, but probably a bit of understanding as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We knew we were going to get something. Like we said, we have a veteran team, and they understood how much better that we could get, um, you know, from, from that game on August 11th. And, and like I said, I'm sure Kapai is the exact same way. I mean, yeah. I, you know, they made tons of mistakes also. So um, it was yeah, it was two good teams going against it. We were lucky to win. Now our job is to improve and move on with the season just like theirs is. Absolutely. One more question, Coach. I, I love getting into the psyche of successful coaches. Let me just ask you this. If you had to choose going into this game and you've had a, 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 a you could have chose a, a lesser team and had a blowout win or a team like this and have just a, a, a down to the last second win, which kind of game do you prefer going into oh, a I, game like this? Oh, look, we, we always want to play quality opponents. And um, you know, that's why we, we signed up as Scambia. We didn't have to play Scambia. I mean, we didn't, you know, they, they want to play us. We want to play them. 
Um, let's just see see where you know how the game goes, and and you know win or lose, we move on. And Absolutely. same thing with them. But right now, man, it's, we're just excited about playing this game and taking care of little things and all the details and um, just getting forward to. I'm um, looking forward to competing. Absolutely, I salute both coaches because it's in athletic directors because it's it's real easy to just try to line up those. Uh, those weak games in the, in the non-conference, right. in the you know non-divisional games, if you will. But uh, I think these games are the ones that you go from early in the season, great measuring stick, and I think both of you got state championships on your mind. Well, we do, but you got to be one game at a time. Yes, That's the way to do it, one practice at a time, one snap at a time. All right. Coach Johnson, we appreciate so much you taking some time being with us, and good luck this weekend as you go off and square off against two of the, two of the best teams at y'all school sizes in the nation. Great. Thanks so much. Look, we really appreciate all you do for to promote uh, private school athletics. Yes, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Thanks.